Hi everybody, Tom Malone here. Uh, today I wanted to talk uh, about state machine programming. State machines can be used to design and program uh, for a situation where uh, the uh, sequence of events is not linear, where you don't have one uh, action automatically following another. They're really great for situations where you're doing one thing, something happens to change what you need to do, and you jump off to do another thing, and then while you're there, something else could happen, and it can move you around between various states. That's where the whole state machine idea comes from. So let's go through some of the terminology. So a state uh, is a way to describe the current situation you're in. Uh, a state usually does one kind of action, doesn't get involved in a whole bunch of other things, so it's just doing one thing. So you might imagine if you were a person and you were being run by a state machine, which most of us are, uh, at any one point in time you're doing something. So you could be sleeping, you could be watching TV, you could be working, you could be playing sports, whatever. Those are states. So so in any one program or in any one day, you could move between a, a range of different states and we can give each one of those states a name. So then what causes you to move from one state to another? Well, that would be an event. So an event is, an action, is something that happens and it may or may not be relevant in the state you're in, but if it is relevant, then typically it causes you to change to another state. So for a person, an example might be you're in the watching TV state. All right? and the phone rings and it's someone that says you need to come to work so the event is being called to work and what that will do is it will cause you to change to your working state at which point you are doing whatever your job is so we have events and we have states quite often when you transition from one state to another you have to do an action and it's only done during that transition you don't do it continuously it's just done one time so for example our example with the person you're watching TV in your pajamas, the phone rings, that's the event, and you get called to work. So the action you take at that point is probably getting dressed. So you get dressed and then you go to work. So you've got um, a state, an event, an action. Now the thing to note here is that there could be several events that cause you to transition out of a state and they could go to different states. So for example, the phone could ring, it says come to work, so you transition to the work state. Whereas if the phone rings and says, come play pickleball, then you go, okay, and then you go to the playing pickleball state. So uh, it's not always just a sequence of linear events. It's, uh, it's events that can feed to all sorts of different states. So to manage this situation, uh, before you start creating a program, the best thing to do is to create a state transition diagram. A state transition diagram is a graphical means of representing the states, the events, the transitions, and the actions. Uh, if you can if you can write uh, if you can so sort of describe your uh, situation as a state transition diagram it's then very easy to program it because all your situations all your conditions all your transitions are completely defined ahead of time so now it's just a matter of coding it you're not designing it as you go you've already figured it out the other reason for doing a state transition diagram is first you create your list of states then you create your events that do transitions and once you've done you go okay now are there any other events that I haven't thought of here that takes me between other states? So it gives you an opportunity to, to graphically look and go, okay, what about here to here, what about here to here, what about here to here? And you can you know, either say, yes, I have a transition, or no, that's never going to happen. And it's a great way to then let you say, well, I've taken into account all the possible transitions that I need to worry about. Here it is in my diagram. Let's get encoded. 